You are listening to the regular version of Sexy Marriage Radio, smrnation.com. You've turned on Sexy Marriage Radio, where the best sex happens in the marriage bed. Here's your host, Dr. Corey Allen. (laughs) You would not have made it as a musician. No, I would not have. (laughs) This is Sexy Marriage Radio, (laughs) alongside my wife, Uh, who just brings laughter and joy, uh, particularly right before we get on the air. Okay, Uh, (laughs) I'm here for you. (laughs) Appreciate it. And I'm glad that the SMR Nation is here for us, too. I am, too. That they show up each and every week, and here we go, the last episode of 2021. Mm. Pretty amazing. Another year. (laughs) I'm just trying to speak to what helps couples... Um, just create more in marriage, whatever that might be, to connect better, to get out of a rut, to deal with conflict. To be a better you. To be a better you. That's the ultimate goal. Mm-hmm. It's just grow up, be better. Would I want to be married to me? It's a fantastic question to end out this year and move into next. And we are so glad that they're a part of us mm-hmm. in this journey alongside. Um, and so we want to hear from you. What's your questions, topics, uh, concerns, feedback, praise. We want it all. 214 702 9565 or feedback at sexymarriageradio.com, where we read every email that comes in. Some get answered directly, some get it on the show, um, some get collated into several because there's, there's a lot of different of the same kind of question coming in. And so we batch them and answer them that way. But we're so glad that they speak up and they get a get help us steer this ship and where it goes. Yeah. And like we mentioned last week, as we're winding down this year, and, you're, and people are oftentimes making plans for next. Uh huh. Um, June twenty third through the twenty fifth is the Sexy Marriage Radio Getaway in Indianapolis. Yeah. So save your spot now because we will sell out, and you just go to smrnation.com forward slash getaway. Learn more all about it. Um, and this time the sign up sheet's different. So when you when you register, you actually will there's two there's check boxes to fill in to save your hotel spot because we're we're collecting the names that we will then send to the hotel for the uh, SMR getaway rate that we got this year rather than them scheduling it and, and reserving so it themselves. Se- so to secure the rate, they have to give us the information register it as, with, a, as part okay. of as part of the registration form, you click you check the dates you want the hotel room. Okay. And then we will turn that in when the time gets closer. Okay. But we want people to jump on it as the holidays are winding down and the new year's rolling in because we will sell out and spaces are already filling up. So, right. so get on board and come see us in Indy. Get on the tray. Well, coming up on today's regular free version is um, we're pulling out a best of okay. today uh, for this episode. And what I've done is it's, I love it because we can go through and look at the stats and I've just looked at which are the most popular shows through the history of Sexy Marriage Radio. And so for this one, um, it's a best of, and on the regular version, we got an email coming in um, about a wife, a husband who's asking about how do we move beyond just functional level, obligation, duty kind of sex, Mm -hmm. where it plays a role Mm -hmm. that is an aspect of it. But if that's all it is, neither party is in a good shape. They want more passion. and Right. Yeah. And then there's also a caller wanting to know about masturbation and sin. Okay. Because that's a topic that we've touched on in, in the past. And so mm-hmm. we're pulling that one back out to touch on it again. Okay. And then on the extended version today, which is deeper, longer, and there are no ads, you can subscribe at smrnation.com forward slash SMR Academy. The whole world of expectations. Mm, wah, wah. What do we do with them? Because we all got them. And the way we frame it is they're just... Plan disappointments. All that's coming up on today's show. So this is an email that came in, Pam, uh, a little while ago. Okay. That's from a husband saying, I've got a question. My spouse and I have been married 11 years. We continue to have sex on a frequent basis, but my spouse does it more out of duty than delight. She's only been interested in having an orgasm twice in the past 14 months. And she just has sex with me because she knows I need it, which I appreciate. It's very functional rather than fun. No foreplay, no laughing, no communicating about preferences. They have three young kids and a couple part-time jobs, so she's pretty tired with this stage of life. 
He struggles because it's, it's the larger narrative of their sex life, which has been a struggle for most of the marriage. In the past, she's asked me to do certain things that would help her get in the mood, such as help with chores, shave his beard, approach her a certain way, etc. But that's rarely made a difference from his perspective. I also have been open in our marriage about my sexual desires and preferences. She's listened and often agreed to try new things, but then there's very little follow-through from her, even though those things are agreed to, leaving him feeling disappointed, disrespected, and unloved. I long for a joyful, fun sexual relationship with my wife, but I'm just not sure that is who she is or if it is even possible. Do you have any suggestions? Thank you. Mm. So in the past, we have done episodes on what do you do with functional level sex? What do you do when one, the higher desire for novelty, uh, engagement, depth, variety, et cetera, wants more Mm -hmm. and the lower desire is just following a script or hitting functional level sex. Just getting by with what they can. And we've talked about in the past, you know, change it up in midstream as the higher desire, oftentimes when in our shows, we've done that leaning towards the husband to just switch positions, try something different. Don't speak about it. Just make the move, um, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But I want to take a little bit of a different slant with this one. Okay. Because I think this is one of those, while that still works, he's talking about more what goes on outside of the bedroom as well. That's, that's what I'm hearing. Tell me okay. if you're hearing different, Pam. Okay. Um, take you took this barn, this horse out of the barn. Let's, <laughs> let's roll with let's it. Let's see and, how far it's going to yep, go. Yep. Okay. Hopefully, we don't get lost or get ro- get thrown from the ride. Um. So I'm curious because what he's what he's saying is throughout the course of their marriage, they've had some conversations about it. She's even said, "Here's some things I think that can help." Mm-hmm. Which, in my experience, in the 25 years, almost 26 years I've had with you, yeah, and then with the people that I've worked with in my office, in my experience with the lower desire spouse, particularly when that spouse is the wife, she's not really sure what it would be, right? There's some of these are just stabs in the dark because it's like, she doesn't have specific preferences of like, okay, this is the missing key. I would agree with that. And typically that sometimes I would attribute that to the lower desire spouse, just since that's not necessarily a priority, that's not where time is spent researching and trying to figure right. out what it is that makes you tick in that arena. Right. There's not a lot of internal drive just inherently in the, right. how do I fix this? I really want to spice this up. Yeah. I'm re- but I'm really not sure. Right. And so a lot of times I really believe a lot of women, in in case for this emailer, they they wrestle with, I don't know. And it is a legit answer. It because <laughs> they is. really don't. It's yeah. not a specific, and that's where it's not an evasion. It's not them trying to evade the question. Well, it can be, but I, in the the slant I want to take with this horse out of the barn today okay. is it's not. I'll agree with you what you're saying. Yeah, because there are times with the sophistication of the way the dynamic goes in marriage that it can be an evasion. Well, don't we know when our spouse is blowing us off and saying, "I don't know." Yes. And there's there's a legit, I don't know, and then there's the, I'm blowing you off. Kind right. Of. And yeah. so this is one to where those of us who spend a lot of energy, effort, uh, intellect, uh, desire, drive, whatever, what have you in this arena of how do I spice up sex more? How do I have more? How do I create deeper connection? Whatever it is that I'm longing for. It's a foreign concept to think that how would you not know? And so we need to, on the higher desire side of this, think, okay, they don't think like we do. And intellectually speaking, that's probably a duh, Mm. but deep down, it's absolutely true. And you've got to come to grips with that to realize they don't see it the way we do. And that doesn't mean anything's wrong. That just means that's the difference between us. Yeah. And so sometimes that foreign thought, we've got to wrestle with it on the higher desire side of it too which is why I want to spin this to outside of the bedroom okay. to where rather than how do I get her more engaged in thinking about this, longing for this, taking a lead in it or engaging in it on a deeper level, how am I doing this in my own life outside of the bedroom and the other aspects of my life? 
Okay. We talked about last week's episode on the extended content. We went into what are the elements of a great story? Mm -hmm. How do you create a better life? Mm -hmm. And we went through and listed four components that have to be a part of it. And it's really a good framework to look at. Here's, here's how you do this to really create a more passionate, vibrant life. Right, which draws the other spouse in, in so many different aspects of life. That's where I want to land. Including sexually. That's where I want to land on this. Because when you first met each other, there's a likelihood that she was into the vibe you were giving, not just sexual. Mm-hmm. It was the way you conducted yourself. It was the way you approached her. It was the way you carried yourself. It's the way you handled responsibilities, cared for other people. I mean, we say this with our daughter. How does how do the any boy that's interested in you or has on your radar, how does he treat other people? Right. Because that's a big component of who are they as a person. Right. Right. And I would say the same to our son. How does she treat her friends? How does she treat other people? Yeah. Because that's a big component of who they are. Because we can put on a good persona. But how we are with other people shows who we are, too. Right. And so how congruent are those two things? How live are you? And and this is where, as a husband, and my hunch would be, based on he's reaching out, he's listening, he sees some of the hurdles and some of the wins thus far, my hunch would be he's doing this already, but maybe could shore it up a little bit. Okay. Meaning... When, with whatever it is that you're doing, how have you interwoven a sexual vibe into the relationship continually with your wife? How do you do foreplay outside of the bedroom where you're really targeting her most potent sexual organ, which is her mind? And if he's already... So what is it that you're recommending here for him on this regard because it it sounds like she's got a lot of the busyness of life at play you know Mm -hmm. the small kids Mm part-time job um and she's agreed to some things I, i guess the thing that i heard in that arena is they've had the discussions she's agreed to some things how is he then luring her into those things? Okay, well, so in, in one regard, thanks for bringing that up, Pam. In one regards, as the higher desire, just because the lower desire agrees to something, we as the higher desire have to realize that doesn't mean they all of a sudden became the higher desire in it, just it, because they agreed it. Doesn't mean they became the higher desire. Doesn't mean that they're even going to initiate it. Right. You Because they agreed to it, don't expect her all of a sudden, all of a sudden her clothes to just fall off that night. Right. Or for her to come right. and rip yours off because you she agreed to it. Right. Because it can be one of those in the moment. Absolutely. She's like, I can see that. And then other things happen and we get derailed. And for the lower desire, it's easier to get derailed than the higher desire. Yeah. That's agreed. part of the dynamic. <laughs> and so there is a component as the higher desire. And this is probably uh, put a pin in this for a future show. As a higher desire, we need to talk some more about this whole concept of leadership fatigue. <laughs> Right, <laughs> just yes. always having to be in the lead, yeah, and the fatigue that can come with it, and yeah, the, and, and what that message is on the other side coming back of like I'm tired of always having to be the one that leads this because it does leave me feeling what he's describing, uh, rejected, alone, not you know disrespected, unloved, sure, right. But I want to just what I'm thinking of is a lot of times we can start to see the dynamic of okay, I want more sexual vibe between us. I've initiated, I've made comments, I've blurted, which is a great Dr. Glover phrase of if it's on your mind, blurt it, say it, put it out there. And it, it, over the history of the relationship, typically those go fall flat. Okay. So that means we don't keep doing it. Right. Rather yeah. than, wait, if that's a part of who I am, why am I tempering myself for that? Mm. Because my, my hunch is, and tell me if I'm wrong because of the experience you've had with me mm-hmm. over the 26 years almost, my hunch is when I can start to be more overt about just who I am and what I'm interested in and how I conduct myself, and I feel like over the years I have gotten really good at figuring out how to bring in a sexual vibe in a fun way that just kind of keeps it right there under the surface, if not above the surface. Yeah. That the manner in which I do that is all that matters. 
it's so much more enticing when it is overt, when it's just, here's, here's who I am. And I'm just laying it out on the table rather than feeling like there's passive aggressive, Mm -hmm. um, comments or hints or, or whatever the case may be. Or the bigger issue is, I think the higher desire a lot of times only does these when they are interested in sex. Uh, yeah. Right. And so there can be a yeah. couple of days go by after you've had sex and you're like, okay, I, I can, we got our cycle, so it's not going to be till the weekend. So I'll start dropping those things again on Thursday. Sure. And she's reading that as you only say those things when there's the possibility of sex or when you're horny or when it's been a while. Rather than, why not have it as, if that's something I'm interested in regularly, which is what I hear from a lot of higher desire husbands, Yeah. why not keep dropping those things and using those things and interweaving them appropriately? This is not just remove filter and say it all the time. That, right. that's, that can be too much of a tsunami. But why not interweave it and then handle the response better? Yeah. Realize the goal isn't necessarily... And this is where we're heading in the extended today. Okay. My, I needed to level set my expectation because what helped me was recognizing if I could make a sexual innuendo comment, even in some of the most inopportune times, the goal wasn't, I need to make sure we have sex that day, right then, right now, right now, whatever. It was the goal was, did I get some sort of reaction from you? Did I get a giggle? Did I get a smile, a smirk, a something? Because a lot of times it would be a smile or a smirk and then a, yeah, good try or <laughs> no way or whatever. But the fact that I got that smile, even though I got shot down, it still hit. It still landed. It still landed. It still uh, it leaves me as the spouse knowing he's just into me all the time. Right. That's the hope. That's the message yeah, that you want to send. I like knowing that you're into me. Right. And that's so that's the, the whole goal is... This is what he's describing. That's what I'm reading. Yeah. So how do you up that game, if you will, outside of the bedroom that has just more vibrancy and more life that you can interweave the, the sexual innuendo and the vibe into it, but also interweave yourself into it. Have fun with what you do. Be alive with what you do. If you have a great work ethic, be dedicated and and continue to conduct yourself in the manners in which draw her in. Be a man of your word. Gotcha. Right? Because I yeah. think that's the kind of concept that draws people in, that then the leap from good collaborative relationship as a, as a beta couple, mm-hmm. if you will, where you okay. manage life well, mm-hmm. it's a closer leap to get to that, no, nah, now let's get naked. Okay. I'm... I'm- processing okay (laughs) okay because sex doesn't happen by accident we've talked about that a lot in the past it it doesn't happen by accident and creating that environment if if you've been in a routine of just kind of gearing up or dropping those things dropping those little conversations about sex or sexual innuendos if, if you're in that routine um that it only happens on the day of or the day before you usually have sex, then it it's a long process to flip this right. and have the spouse see you consistently maybe changing that routine. Right. It this does this does take some time for it all to find a new level of norm between you. Yeah. Because she could be and likely will read it as okay. And so sometimes there can even be a, a benefit to the heads up of, hey, you know what? I realize I've kind of tempered myself in some regards, and I'm not going to come on full go, full bore on you, but I'm going to I'm going to try some things out. Yeah, just heads up. Yeah, and I think that's announcing an intention is a good way to go. I would agree. Well, let us know how it goes. Two one four seven zero two nine five six five or feedback at sexymarriageradio dot com if we miss something. That we're, you're still wondering, let us know. Hey guys, so first time caller, long time listener. My wife and I listen to uh, the podcast a lot and absolutely love it. Uh, your latest one we heard uh, talking about how masturbation is not sin, and there's so much about it that I think is intriguing and, and I appreciate, uh, but would love clarity. Um, we've had some fun conversations about that, uh, and 
I guess a question is, is, is it not sin in the context of marriage when you're, I mean, because yes, the physical act of masturbation, maybe, maybe that's not sin, but is it sin if you're fantasizing about somebody else? Is it sin if you're not married? How do you, you know, go forward in masturbating if you're not fantasizing about something or thinking about somebody, um, body part? I, I don't know. It, is it lumped in under sexual immorality? Uh, so would love to have you unpack that and maybe even talking with somebody on a prominent spiritual realm. You know, you've got somebody like John Piper out there and others that would maybe say that masturbation is sin. And I think they're qualified and, and solid uh, in their teaching. So um, would just like to hear that broken down in a deeper way. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Okay. This is one of those topics that is an interesting conversation because we can go a lot of different ways with it. Yeah. And right off the bat, when we're talking about is it a sin or not, um, he's he's even alluding to it in the voicemail of is the act a sin or not, but more importantly, what surrounds it? That's the stance we've usually taken. Right. Is what surrounds it. Right. And he's alluding to John Piper, so I did some researching of him. Even reached out, didn't hear anything back because he's a pretty prominent name, sure, <laughs> in the world of the Christian uh, evangelic mm-hmm. and theolo- theologian. Yep. Uh, but if you if you research his site, he comes down on the on the side of it is, it's wrong, not the actual act, but in the context of a relationship. Okay, is, is more what I'm reading. Okay, from, um, from him. And then there's even some others out there that are of the similar vein, and a lot so of it... So, back up, it's okay. wrong. He's saying, from what you're understanding from him, it's wrong in the context of a relationship, and that if you're in a relationship... It's because, well, it's, he's, he's coming down... masturbate at all, you're... He's coming down on the... It's, it's the surrounding aspect of it is what's the bigger issue, the sexual immorality, the fantasy, the, the, the words of Jesus. Okay. That if you lust after somebody else, you've committed adultery with them. Okay. But even that you could parse into, get deeper, and I don't want to get into the exegesis of of Scripture Mm -hmm. with this topic, because Scripture does not ever say masturbation is wrong. It's it's one of those untouched things. Okay. But there is um, one of those where I want to land with our conversation, Pam, is what is surrounding it, but also what are the messages with it that you're telling yourself and your spouse, because I want to keep this in the context of a relationship, because this is sexy marriage radio. Right. We're not speaking to singles specifically. Right. Even though I know we have some in the nation that are single. Yeah. But what surrounds it when you're getting into lust, pornography, other things, yes, now we can start getting into this. I am landing in an arena that is at at best a slippery slope. (laughs) Yeah, certainly it's, 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 it's It does lead to a lot of things Mm -hmm. that can happen. And so is it wrong? Eh. That's a tough one, right? Because there's, we've talked about in the past that it can be an appropriate, uh, helpful way possibly to deal with a huge disparity between higher desire and lower desire. Right. So we've, we've said that if, you know, a spouse is, you've got medical issues and there's, Mm-hmm. Long spans of time that or deployment. A deployment. You, um, yeah. There's there's reasons that spouses aren't together and sexual relations aren't happening. Uh, there's legitimate reasons for that mm-hmm. that have nothing to do with some sort of dispute or argument between the spouses. Right. This right. is just either or nature or health can't can't allow you to do that. So yeah, we've said if if your mind is focused on a spouse. That's where your your thought processes are going, or to your spouse, and and also if it's something that's not hidden and secret, right? And because that's where, again, I, I don't in this conversation. There's it's hard to find real clear lines of distinction because mm-hmm. situation matters, context matters, yeah, it does. Of, the, of the couples, right? So, so it's looking at this as. How is this to the detriment 
and you, the fact that one of you is masturbating and now the other person could be interested and you can't perform, you're not interested, you don't have the desire because you're just masturbating. That's a detriment to the relationship then. Yeah, it is. Because it was likely hidden. And now all of a mm-hmm. sudden when she or he comes after you, you're like, yeah, I'm really not interested. That's the reason why. But you're not going to explain it to him why. Mm-hmm. You know, I already took care of myself. Thanks. You know, so it's just it's looking at it through this lens of I don't like the argument of is it right or wrong as much as it is. Is it healthy? Mm-hmm. Right. That That's where I want to go with this conversation. Yeah. Okay? I, d- I don't know that it's clear anywhere as to a ultimate right or wrong, 100% yes or no. Right. So I came across um, one of the members of one, uh, one of the mastermind groups that I run um, had just posted in a board for the group that they're done. And he just posted that he was listening to some stuff from Dr. Glover and No More Mr. Nice Guy. Yeah. And he was struck by the fact that Dr. Glover made a comment that it's possible to view porn, fantasy, and masturbation as scraps. And it's these kinds of scraps that one experiences with bad sex. Okay. And so I want to land on, is, it, is, is masturbation a healthy expression or does it set up a scenario to where you actually are hurting yourself and the relationship because you're settling for bad scraps. I think anytime you're trying to do something solo and not in relationship together, it can't be as vibrant and as full. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. So, I mean, I, I, I know where I stand on that one. Um, masturbation is not something that's going to get you that fullness that the sexual relationship you lose the relational component of, of of another human being in close proximity to you. Yeah, and that's yep. that's part of how this was created. That's part of how this relationship works together and is more vibrant and more alive. Okay, and so just so it's very clear to the audience of, of this listening to this episode, I want to take the stance of there's normal and healthy are two different things. Okay, right? and why are you making that distinction? Because out there can be, well, but na- masturbation is normal. Okay, but is it healthy? That's where I want to land. Okay. Right? Because what I think is most of the time, when you're introduced to masturbation, it's usually in adolescence, when you just are chocked full of hormones, mm-hmm. and you're unsure of how to handle these hormones, and the wind blows and the hormones rage, and he or she walks by in the hormones rage, a thought, whatever it is. And so masturbation oftentimes, and this carries forward into adulthood, into marriage, into life, mostly masturbation is used for tension release, soothing, hip. it's a hypnotic for sleep, it's the numbing of something, or it's a great way to enhance a better sense of guilt. Oh, my. <laughs> okay, that last one just really stands out, so... Dive deeper because into you already it. feel guilty about sexual vibes and sexual energy because of upbringing, because of unknown, because of uncertainty. So masturbation is a great way just to feel you, you feel pleasure, but then you have the in, ensuing guilt that follows. Okay. So it's just that vicious circle of what we do in life, right? Okay. It's like that. Oh, I know I shouldn't have had that soda. Oh, I know I shouldn't have had that second drink. Oh, I know I shouldn't have had that second dessert, and now I feel guilty. It's the same kind of way we are as people. Okay. Right? So, but I think a lot of times, if you really are honest with yourself, masturbation has become something that it truly is a means in, unto itself. It's a, it's, there's an attachment to an outcome. It's not for a deeper connection. Oh, yeah. It's, it, it truly Even is. Even if that deeper connection outcome. is for yourself, you likely don't take yourself to a dinner and a movie before you masturbate. <laughs> no. Let's go show, I'm going to show myself a good time and I'm going to. Top it off with a great romantic evening at home. Right. <laughs> Candles, ambiance, good foreplay. We just don't do it that no, way. No. Right? And so if that is the manner in which you approach it, the brain cannot usually, there's, there's parts of the brain that it will, but a lot of times brain memories are not, it's the act that matters. And so you start to train your brain that any time there's any kind of erotic feelings going on, then all of a sudden now I've got to get to a, a point. I've got to get to a goal. Rather than creating and tasting what sex could be, 
that's free flowing. It could go a lot of different ways. Right. It's a vibe between you. It's a whole other thing rather than I got to just get to orgasm as fast as I can. Right. So if that's something that is frequent, then masturbation is is keeping you then in your sexual relationship with your spouse from experiencing even more. Right. Because it's that training of your brain. Right. And so a lot of times, even in Dr. Glover's book on healthy, um, on No More Mr. Nice Guy, he has a chapter at the end called Healthy Masturbation. Because a lot of nice guys struggle with masturbation. Okay. And it's something that's very covert, is very hidden, it's associated with porn. That's why premature ejaculation is a problem mm-hmm. with a lot of men. It's because when they, they've got, their whole sex life has been, it's in secret and it's got to be quick because I don't want to get caught. Mm. Well, if you're with a wife, that's not good. I don't, yeah. It's got to be quick because I don't want to get caught. Well, she's going to be like, really? Yeah, I'm just I, now getting warmed up. I, yeah. You know, I could just now be getting into this. Yeah, and so he has a whole chapter on how do you retrain your brain. Your brain on porn has a similar path mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with a rebooting, right? Where you take a a a sabbatical from ejaculating from sex, and it's a retraining of your brain because you have to get this rewire those associations of the feelings and the mm-hmm. sensations, and so to me. Uh, and again, you know, if you've listened to Sexy Marriage Radio, you know we don't usually come down with the this is the absolute right, absolutely you have to. I mean, there's there's only a few things we are major proponents of, mm-hmm. meaning sex in marriage is where we believe. Right. You know, it's it's saved for marriage. It's a sacred thing. Mm-hmm. Masturbation is one of those. We're not going to take the stance of absolutely you got to stop. I just want to present the. Is the route you and the relationship you have with this aspect possibly in your life healthy when it when you put it in a relational context? Mm-hmm. Is it steering you towards deeper connection, deeper bonding? Because I realize if I'm if you're taking the stance of, yeah, but if I don't get a release, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna have any <laughs> because my wife or my husband's not interested. Right. Well, that's the gridlock you're going to have to face within yourself. That's right. It's already there, so why not make it more overt between the two of you? Mm -hmm. And then I went and had breakfast with our senior pastor and Mm -hmm. asked him, "Right, what do you think? And I love the way he framed it because he even said the same kind of stuff we're talking about of, well, situation matters. And if you've got a season where a spouse is not available, could you... In a prayer life and inviting God into that, say, you know what, God, I invite you into my masturbatory experience and help me help me understand with the Spirit. Am I going towards my relationship with you and my spouse or away from it? Because it be- it can become an idol, just like sex can become an idol. Yeah, it, that's where he could, landed. We could make anything that way, right? Yeah, and how many people are actually bringing that into their prayer life? Right. <laughs> probably not too probably, many, let's be honest. Probably not a lot. So I love the, the thought process, the exercise with it of, okay, hold on. This does start to become an individual thing mm-hmm. and a relational thing with God and your spouse. And I think that's a great start. Mm-hmm. So baby, as we wind out 2021... Um, it's been quite a joy to have you along again for this ride. Oh, man. I was about to say the same for you. It is. I won. Uh, I got it in first. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> We're so blessed to have each other in this journey. So I uh, hope that people out there in the nation have that same feeling or they're getting to that direction in their lives. Absolutely. And I'm so blessed to have you as a co-host with this thing. Oh, thank you. That Thanks for it's, it's been great to trusting s- me to sit beside you. To steal time with you to do the shows. It is fun. Over the year and years now. Mm-hmm. This is a fabulous journey thus far. Look forward to another year that's coming right around the corner. Yeah, ready to kick some butt. Well, this has been year. Sexy Marriage Radio. If we left something undone in this best of episode, please let's start the conversation again and one of the best ways to do that is my.smrnation.com. Jump on there. Start a dialogue. We'll see you there. See you next time.